Philosophy. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Those are the worst five seconds of my life. <laughs> All right, that that air was brought to you by the <laughs> Philosophy Club Radio Hour. Yeah, you were listening to KDUX Web Radio, broadcast live from Richland College in Dallas, Texas. We are the voice of Richland College. Views expressed in this show are our own unless otherwise stated and do not reflect the opinion of KDUX Web Radio, Richland College, or the DCCCD. Holy smokes, folks, here we are. Um, coming to you live and direct at KDUX Studios, I, uh, I have with me my all-time favorite student, Uche, you, no, I'm joking. <laughs> um, I, uh, yeah, I'm here with uh, with Emily, um, and I'll let you introduce yourself, of course. But uh, we're here. It's kind of a special episode. The Philosophy Club did not meet yesterday, so typically what we do here is, um, well, what I do is I, I I click and I breathe heavily and I um, sniffle into the mic. That's what I do here. But but typically what we do with this radio program is we recap the uh, the meeting of the Philosophy Club. But we didn't have a meeting because we had something even more special happened yesterday. It was the Dallas County Community College District Philosophy Undergraduate Student Conference hosted by Richland College. Yes, we have this every semester. It's been just Richland-centric um, for a few semesters until the last couple where we've opened it up to the districts. Um, still heavily heavily Richland represented because, um, you know, our students rock. But, uh, but um, also it's cool to have a, a strong representation uh, when you're at home field. You know, when you're on your home court. We had it at the lovely Brazos Gallery. I would say maybe the best venue on campus for such an event. Uh, blow, blowing up our Instagram and Twitter pages with the content. So check us out at uh, Instagram as well as Twitter. Um, that's, I think, at, at RLC Philosophy Club and at RLC Philosophy, respectively. Uh, yeah, and so what we have here in studio is one of the performers, somebody who was asked to present, submitted a proposal, was selected after an arduous selection process, and um, she presented as part of a cohort. You had, it was a group presentation of sorts, and uh, you presented on themes that we are studying in my Loss of Innocence class. Um, but, you know, uh, I've said too much. Why don't, we, why don't we let her introduce herself? And feel free to plug any, you know, other associations you might have on this campus. Besides just, you know, first and foremost, Professor Manzi's student. Comfortably. <laughs> Hello. My name is Emily. My name is Emily. Um, I'm a student of Manzi, um, <laughs> of course. I'm a, the photo editor of the Richland Chronicle and historian nice. of the Alice Club. So if cool. I thought I had enough on my hands, no. I <laughs> wanted to go present, too. <laughs> Absolutely, you uh, you know, you took it upon yourself um, to uh, to be part of a, a, a presentation, and I think you you did a great job. I think your whole group did a great job. Um, you know, I noticed that it's the students who are already busy that tend to put themselves out there and things like this. So uh, I'm always impressed by that. I, I was a student like that very much so, and um, yeah, it's nice to see my own students doing that kind of thing. And Emily, so your shot graces the cover of the current Chronicle. Is that correct? Um, well. I worked on it with my photo editor and uh, another fellow student. I'm not that good at Photoshop, so my editor had the concept. I refined the idea, and um, the other student, I think she also has a radio show, Adrian. She Shout is out more, Adrian. Yeah, she's more into Photoshop, and so she's the one that executed it. So it was kind of also a group thing. Ah, awesome. I don't know what the paper says. I haven't. I've had it, but I haven't read that yet. So okay. Well, a lot of, see, you're, you're just a collaborative person by nature, it sounds like. Yeah, I like feeding off of other people, but also, like, giving back, so. No, that's, that's, that makes you an ideal work partner. Um, probably a horrible friend, but a very ideal work, no, it's not true. <laughs> uh, yeah, you have to have friends to be a horrible friend. What, um, <laughs> I wanted, so, so here's, uh, here's why I got you in the studio today, because, I forgot to cancel the radio show, <laughs> no, um, partly. But uh, again, we didn't. the Philosophy Club didn't meet as a club, although they were all in attendance for uh, the presentation from 2 to 3 yesterday. And I should say this, generally the Philosophy Club meets every Tuesday in EO32. That's El Paso Hallway 32 from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. where we chop it up and discuss all sorts of fun stuff. And uh, but like I said yesterday, we did not. And so we don't really have, we're like, oh, I don't have content for a radio show. And 
I think a lot of the students were like, there's probably not going to be a radio show because there was no club. Mm. And, uh, they're, they, you know, they're not wrong for thinking that. But um, I was happy to run into Emily here, and, and I can we can talk about the conference. Emily observed some presentations. I guess she participated in it. She can kind of, you know, take us through the process by which she found time <laughs> and made time to work with others. And, and what, what, which thinker did you cover in yours? Yours was I, Record? Yes. Yeah, you did Paul Record. Yes. Right on. So, yeah, why don't you tell me a little something about that? What was it about the conference that appealed to you? And you could be honest. The not doing the final? Don't say that. No, I'm joking. <laughs> yes, I offered an extra incentive for some students. Uh, I, I, I said if you um, submit something and you are selected by the uh, selection committee, which consists primarily of Louisa, Professor Louisa Benton and myself, and you show up and you present, uh, you don't have to take the final exam. Now, the, the reason I do that is because uh, I teach five classes. Um, I'm teaching five classes uh, all face-to-face this semester. I call it a five-by-five. Five. It's the pretty heavy course load. Uh, humble brag. I'm, and, I'm uh, taking five classes, so. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us. <laughs> ten by ten. And um, let's give each other a high five. Dun -dun 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 -dun. <laughs> How's a clown nose? <laughs> Anyways, uh 100% of my final exams are 100% oral. So the final exam is an oral exam. Uh, and I, I, the way I look at the presentation is, and everything that goes into it, it's essentially an, an, it tests your oral communication skills. And, you know, you presented on class material orally. I would say in front of a crowd makes it even more difficult. And, and you know, you did... Uh, you, you, you did it. You did it. <laughs> okay. That's all we needed to you do. You did really we well. It. Nothing good. Not good. Just it. No, you did You did really well. I'm not joking. You, you were presenting on very difficult material, and you were very articulate. And look, the, the worry I have, because, you know, I, I, I'm always torn about whether or not to accept group proposals, especially your group was, I think, four, because mm -hmm. what ends up happening is sometimes students will talk over each other, and it'll be kind of tough to have a coherent presentation, but you guys were really perfectly balanced. Each person was responding sort of in, in order, and you were building off of each other's responses. And you got uh, you had somebody really challenging some some of your interpretations in the audience, uh, and you guys handled it beautifully. Um, yeah, so I think it uh, I think it was best case scenario for you guys. Uh, but why don't you take me through the process there? I mean, you know, is because this could serve as something of a commercial for um, for the uh, the Dallas County Community College District Philosophy on the Graduate Student Conference. We got to bridge that title somehow, <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and you know, t kind of give us a firsthand experience of it because I can't because obviously I, as as facilitator and co-organizer and co-marketer and and what have you, I'm not myself submitting to this or anything like that. So, what was your experience? What did you take away from it? I mean, we didn't even think we would get selected. We set the bar pretty low. Cause <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> because you said that if we at least got selected, we would receive some extra credit. And so that was incentive enough. We were content with applying, but not getting through all the way, you know? Oh, I don't remember saying that. I said if you apply, if you even submitted, you'd get extra credit. That doesn't sound like me. I mean, partial, at least. I must like, because, drunk. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, okay, I think I did say that. For your class, my learning community, I think I did extend yes. that particular, but only for that class, yeah. yeah. And so you didn't want to get picked? <laughs> I mean, we didn't think we were because you kept saying how it's very competitive or how it it's very like tough and the competition's going to be tough that it we're going to go against five other schools or That's something right. like Six that. Six other schools. And we were just like, eh, <laughs> if we get picked, we get picked. But if not, we're fine with that. <laughs> At least we tried. Uh, you sound like complacent boogers. Yeah. If we get picked, we get picked. We were we were all bu super busy, though, so we were happy with that, too. But then we got picked, and then we had tried to find a way to schedule everything, and that's why we ended up building our performance two hours before we actually went on. Wow, a thrilling... It all comes together at once. You were writing the narrative, so to speak. Yeah, yeah I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why um, I, I appreciate your proposal, is because... Look, this is this loss of innocence class is like my baby's my baby. It's like my baby, and uh, I care about it a lot, and I want to see the students present on it. Um, and when I saw that the four of you, you know, strong students, I would say, Jack, is this recording? It is. <laughs> okay, good. I wasn't sure. Am I sounding? Can you hear me? Oh yeah, I can hear you through the headphones. Okay. I have her on mute. 
I don't like what she says. Anyways, uh, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm curious. I, I wanted to make sure there was some representation from that learning community. And um, there was quite a few, as you, as you saw. Because uh, I, I thought that, again, you guys were bringing, I, don't know, I say you, I mean, all the students in, in, in your cohort there for the LC. Um, speaking of which, uh, shout out the LCPC, the Learning Communities Podcast, hosted by Professor Kellen Scoggins and myself, records every Tuesday from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock right here in KDOX Studios, uh, although we didn't do it yesterday because of the conference. Um, anyways, yeah, the, uh, the presentations for you guys were, were, I think, great, not just conceptually, but also in terms of what you were bringing to the table uh, variation-wise. So, you know, we had a couple of students kind of read a dialogue out together and there was a bit of uh, acting involved and did you see did you see that did you see uh caesar and um john's no we wanted to but oh it's too bad it was good <laughs> caesar he can act he was putting some acting into his voice it was pretty good of course um john looked completely stoic i think he was totally stoic i wonder what that looks like he's <laughs> um yeah it looked at <laughs> they were in the zone it was great and i think john wrote the script um mm -hmm. and it was cool i liked the idea and it was it, it was a really good examination of what we're, we're learning in the in the loss of innocence class specifically sart and 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 and, and carney and, and narrative um and existentialism the uh but yeah but yours was great because the four of you had like sort of different fields that you partitioned so it was like well let me ask you this then i i, I didn't mean to interrupt you how how much work did you do? Like, you did, did you do the whole thing right beforehand? Because the proposal seemed like it took some time. The proposal, um, it was just an idea, really. I had written some stuff down on scratch paper and then, like, kept it. And then the due date came around, and um, Jennifer was the one who was going to submit it with all our names. What do you eat? Huh? You said the dude ate? No. What do you eat? The, no. du the dude ate? Nobody ate. You said the dude ate. What? You said the due the, date. Oh, oh due God. date. The due date. The they date. Said the, of they the, said the due date. That it was no the date that. It, I'm the just I'm just playing. Final submission was due. Um, um, she asked us what she want what what we should write, and I was the one that came up with the idea, so I felt responsible. Oh, okay. To submit something, so I, I was supposed that. to take my sister to the mall when she texted when she sent me that message, and so I just sat there for about 10 minutes trying to write, like, a paragraph that would summarize everything, and my sister was complaining, but I was like, hold on, oh, <laughs> this is God. important. What a slice of life, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, hey, you did a great job. Yeah, because you let off. You began with the section on Recor. Mm -hmm. And then who went after you? Uh, Lisa, and she did... Okay, it's testing, um, testing your knowledge of their names, <laughs> which was something she was having trouble with before we began recording. It was Lisa and... <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it was fantastic. Um, yeah, I, uh, I was I was impressed with it, and I think you guys handled everything really well. Uh, y there was the group was expressing some nervousness before they went on. I think that was just the rest of them. I <laughs> that was an awesome response. It really was though, because they came in, and I was like, "Why are y'all huddling?" And she goes, "Okay, it's time to present. Go." And I was just like, "What?" And they're like, "You're first. You go." And I was just like, "Okay." <laughs> Yeah, like what's the hey? And listen, I appreciate I appreciate that because I I'm trying to say there's nothing to to be about which to be nervous because, mm -hmm. you know, on the one hand you're the experts here, nobody else, literally nobody else on campus is reading Paul Ricoeur and Heidegger and Sartre except for y'all, so it's not like you have anything to worry about. I, I would say this: I don't, I still don't know much about Jared Paul. Is that his name? Jared Paul? Jake Paul? I'm sorry, Jake Paul. <laughs> sorry. See, case in case in point, mm -hmm. case in Paul, and. uh Again, so I feel like you guys are experts on that, too, mm. because, um, you know, it's really funny. It's just me and Emily. It's just Emily and I in the studio. No, I was right the first time, me and Emily in the studio. And, uh, but I'm not looking at her when I'm talking. I'm looking at myself being recorded, because when I look at her being recorded, as I'm being recorded, I'm not looking. I don't know. It, it messes with the view. So I have to, like, look at myself as I'm talking to make it look like I'm looking at her in the camera. It's really funny. Anyways. Don't think I'm ignoring you. <laughs> I feel like Emily's like, why isn't I he making eye contact? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it did seem like they were nervous. Uh, I think I think the other Emily, um, shout out Emily Polk, was like, uh, I'm just going to look at you the entire time I talk. <laughs> yeah. um, but, uh, but hey, you, you never would have known it. You you definitely seemed like you were completely calm. You were like, yeah, this is all that. These are amateurs. <laughs> no. Um. So, okay, so you were riding, take me back to the mall. Let, let me see if I can, you know, transport me, take me away. 
so you're at the mall. Your sister is probably trying to go to what? What? What is she trying to buy? She wanted to go to Hot Topic to apply. Oh, really? <laughs> She got the okay. job, so hey. close to her. There you go. She's going to work Black Friday, so I hope she wears armor. She's <laughs> also as tall as I am. Isn't every day Black Friday at Hot Topic? I don't know. Some because they all wear black. Is it still a gothic kind of place? Yeah, I guess. It's gotten more <laughs> livelier as far as um, color-wise. Because Hot Topic's been around since I was a kid. Yeah. Like I, I used to go there in high school and get the band shirts and... You know, it was like intimidating. I was like, am I cool enough to be in Hot Topic? They've expanded their color palette, so I assume I hope so. so. I hope so. Um, well, that's good. So your sister's trying to get a job. You're trying to get, you know, to the conference. Um, I, I guess you, what, you're your sister's ride. Yes. So she's freaking out. You're freaking out. But you pulled it together. Um, you, you submitted that proposal. And then uh, what was the feeling when you learned that you were selected? Take I didn't me there. believe them. I think Emily was the. <laughs> first, I think Emily was the first one to send. Like, hey guys, did you get the email? And I was like, the rejection email. And she goes, no. <laughs> oh, that's great. And she she tells us no that we got accepted. And I was like, this is BS. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I got to do this work now. Yeah. And I saw and I saw that the email and the schedule and it said that we were scheduled for to. Uh, not perform because we're not perform to present at one. You kind of performed. Just, I was just. Hey, what's up, Raphael? <laughs> I just, dang, I, I have to present now. Yeah, I, I know that feeling. It's like you know, because like I, 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 I'll, I'll put in for good opportunities, but knowing that if I get selected, uh, it's going to be a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And so, if I'm being really honest, that's part of me is like, well, you know, it, it'll be. Yeah, just jump on in. I think it should be turned on. Uh, I'm like, okay, well, it should be. It should be not terribly bad because then I don't have to do all this work. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also a, a workaholic, so I'm addicted to doing work. Yeah, I feel so. weird now if I don't have anything on my schedule. Like, what I want mm. for Christmas is for my uh, planner to be blank, but <laughs> like, I don't want it to be. I get kind of, I don't know. I just don't know what to do when I don't have uh, things to do. That's see, I want car insurance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I know what you're saying. Uh, it's it's almost like the grass is always greener. You wish you had some more free time. Then you have free time, and you're like, I'm just sitting around watching more Netflix. Is this this? I'm bored. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I guess I could do my laundry or yeah. something. But uh, but anyway, so so yeah, okay, maybe a bit of regret for applying. Um, well, what was the general reaction? Was was Emily? Was anybody excited? I think <laughs> a few of us were excited. Okay. Um, they were like, "Yeah, guys, we did it," and I was just like, "Dang, guys!" <laughs> no. You're like, "No, guys, I did it." <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But, like, I came, I, w I came up with the idea. Literally, I watched the video the night before you said about the presentation, cause you, s and then after that, I think that Friday. I talked to Emily Polk because I knew she watched the video, and then it, it was my first time talking to Lisa EP? and Jennifer because I also saw them watching the video during class. Oh, not that's during nice. Class, not during Is class. Is that right? No, before man, before <laughs> Mary's class, before Bo Mary's class. Baloney. No, no, they weren't watching it during class. What video are you talking about, by the, the way? Yeah, uh, the YouTube video, the the life, the series, the final episode of the series that we. Oh on. right, okay, so, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then I think you were also trying to like egg us on because our midterm was about to happen, and so it was just this overflow of information <laughs> going on. And That's so right. I was like, "Hey guys, I know we all watched the video, and I watched the video, but then I connected to it to what Manzi said. So do you guys want to do this thing and see if we can get extra credit?" <laughs> and so they were all on board. Yeah, because y'all came to my office mm -hmm. and you're sitting around talking about, it, and you had a lot of the good stuff to say. Like right there is where you really sold me on your on your proposal, mm -hmm. and uh, and so then when you actually propose, I already knew I was going to accept you guys because I liked what you were doing, and I like it's the only way I can learn about anything pop culture related. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> um, was what, what was his name again? Uh, Jake Paul. RuPaul. Jake Paul. Okay. And so Raphael, what we're doing here is is this pal. We're um we're talking about the conference because as you know, Philosophy Club didn't meet yesterday. We had the conference, and uh, you know, have this time to to fill here. And um, Emily presented. You uh, you attended the presentations, uh, some of them. What uh, what was your you know perspective from the the audience there, the audience? What do you think? Did you enjoy the the, the conference? 
Yeah, Eat that mic. Name? I mean, it's sad that I don't know her name, but she had a presentation yesterday where she was talking about her, video games. Her name's Emily. Class. Oh, um, Emily. <laughs> no, that's Emily. Yeah, you're talking about. Um, she's actually the w one of the hosts of the Challenging the Narrative podcast. Shout out Challenging the Narrative podcast. Yeah, and she was she was talking about how video games, how the impact on the impact of video games on kids, especially uh, video games that are violent. Yeah. Yeah. And this is um by the way, we actually didn't say her name. This is Hannah. Yeah, Hannah. <laughs> this is Hannah Watson. Yeah. So I mean what she was presenting yesterday was really intriguing, so I, I enjoyed that. And I think her her part had the audience really had the attention to what she was saying. I think so, yeah. She it, it was a captive audience and um yeah, shout out Hannah Watson. She was really um poised up there. Uh spoke well. She presented a second time later on as a part of another a, a, a joint effort. But um yeah, if you notice uh, a few a few presentations after hers with violence and video games, yeah, was um, a presentation on a video game that was incredibly violent. But the virtues of of what the video game teaches you about philosophy, and so that, I mean, they're both selected with that in mind. They had somewhat contradictory theses, and he was asking her questions during the Q and A, and then I think she was hitting them back as well, which is what you hope for. And I mean, that's what a conference is for. Yeah, that sort of feedback. Um, Emily was uh, taking us through her conference experience, uh, reliving the, the nightmare, <laughs> reliving the joy. Um, okay, so, so what else happened? So, so you were like, okay, we got to get our act together. W was there any point where you were like, I hope the four of us can come together in, on time? Like, w were you nervous that maybe you couldn't wrangle everybody together or uh, you don't want people stepping on each other's toes in terms of topics that you were talking about? So Did you fight over who got to do recor? No. Um, <laughs> okay, didn't think so. I think we all kind of thought about what we wanted to do on our own time. And so the due date was the 6th. Our essay was due a few days before that. That's right. So from the time that you told us our essay was due and that the due date, like us focusing on that project, everything about that went out the window. And we were working on that <laughs> philosophy essay. <laughs> and so they were like, hey, what about the, the presentation thing? And I said, forget about it. <laughs> No, this is so interesting. Wow. I was like, no, like, let's focus on this essay right now because... I'm like, pulling the cord. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Uh, so, so, so what happened? So was it, did so they bring you back? Ki not kind of. So that essay was due the 4th, which was a Sunday. Right. That Monday, we got together, we chatted, and then we were like, okay, let's do this. That Tuesday, we finally turned it in, and then we weren't... We met, the only times we ever really got to meet was after class, and we met f Monday after class, and we had lunch together, and we were like, okay, so what are we going to do? Oh, okay. I think Emily even had to ask for a leave of absence from her work, because she just had so much off on her plate. Um, wow. Like Shout out. Emily. Yeah. I, I skipped part of my uh, news meeting to to go hang out with them first. And yeah, slacker. <laughs> no, that's uh, <laughs> Professor Mez, I have a question for you. Yeah, sure. I mean, I don't know because I'm a little late. So yeah, did you did you talk about your trip to Boston? <laughs> I didn't. Oh, I didn't even mention it. Oh no. yeah, because I like to know how how you oh, had the trip. Yeah, fair quite. We we could segue into that for sure. Um, yeah, for those who don't know, I um, I took a trip to Boston last week. This is why there was no radio hour last Wednesday because I was uh, en route to Bean Town. to represent good old Richland College at the NCHC, the National NH, I'm sorry, the NHCH, the National, wait a minute, yeah, the National Honors, NHCH, yeah, the National, <laughs> no, NC, NCHC, A, B, C, D. Jack, we have to scrap this episode, <laughs> the NCHC, that's what it is, I'm bad at abbreviations and acronyms and names and letters and words. <clears throat> Uh, it's a, so that's the National Collegiate Honors Committee Conference. So essentially every honors program in the country and several honors programs uh, outside of the country, they come together, so it's technically an international conference, um, they come together to, uh, to share curriculum development tips and there's guest speakers and it's a, it's a, it's a huge but really it, they do it real big there. Um, and you know, in Boston it was great because I'm, I went to school outside of Boston. I'm from I'm from the East Coast. I'm from New England area, and so I went to school in Worcester, which is like 40 minutes outside of Boston. 
uh, grew up in high school in Providence, uh, which is also like 40 minutes outside of Boston. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was like a homecoming. I got to hang out with uh, my old college roommates. My, my mom came up uh, on Saturday. It was fun. And then the coverage itself was thrilling. I, uh, I especially, I got to meet the representatives of um, Education First, EF. Education First is uh, going to be partnering with Richland to offer study abroad classes. That would be awesome. And I am, I am offering a study abroad class in the summer of 2020. Uh, low key, uh, actually no, I'm not supposed to announce that. <laughs> Shoot, low key, low Come key on, announcement. Sure. Sorry, Kathleen, um, it's happening. And uh, so I was, I was there as well to to meet with them, and and I got to go to to their headquarters. And I don't know if you can imagine what it's like to work at Google headquarters, but that's what this place seemed like. Um, to the point where it, it, it was, it's a huge, huge high rise. You get a crazy, awesome view of the city of Boston and Boston Harbor. And um, it's just, I don't think anybody there is under the age of, tw- or is over the age of 24 works there. And like they're, they're, they're hip and they're like real cool. And it's, it's like they have like DJ lunch hours and stuff like that. And then you go down to the basement to get food. And I got a vegan shawarma, which I never knew existed. And, and everything around you, you're surrounded 360 degrees by a, jo- by a skateboard park. So it's like I'm sitting there you know, eating my vegan shawarma, my chickpea shawarma. Talking about how I'm teaching classes in Germany and France soon, and um, meanwhile, kids are busting like wicked Nolly 360 <laughs> ghost slides. Like, and I, I don't know if I ever told you guys this. I used to skateboard every day for years. I was huge oh. into it, so it was like really cool to see this. It was it was picturesque. Um, yeah, uh, great trip. the 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 conference itself was fantastic. One of the keynote speakers was a former professor of mine. Yeah. Couldn't make it to his thing sadly, but uh, but it was it was cool to see that connection there and. How was the weather like? Was it cold? Oh, the weather was awful. The weather was <laughs> awful. Um, it, it 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 poured. It rained and poured. And it was so so cold out for like the last couple of days. Saturday wasn't so bad because I you know I walked around. I walked like ten miles. Walked all over Boston. It was cool. <laughs> had dinner at Little Italy. I had this delicious lobster ravioli. Mwah. Thanks for picking up the tab, mom. <laughs> and it uh, yeah, it was it was a good time. Um, one of those trips where you feel lucky uh, as a faculty member to be working at a place like Richland where, you know, they, they let you go on these trips and have these experiences and it's all for the sake of bettering the students. And it's really fantastic. Kathleen does a, an amazing job with, with uh, the learning communities as well as the honors program. And yeah, pretty, pretty good stuff. Uh, thanks for asking. Sorry, I'm back. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, but, you know, we interrupted Emily. Um, you should just explain to us how this was one of the most, uh, you know, moving moments of her life. This conference. So, so please proceed. I forgot where I was. At. I think. Ah um, uh, yes, we just submitted the essay. <laughs> that's what it was. Yeah, <laughs> just had the midterm. Then you're working on the essay, and you're like, "We got to focus on the essay. It's more important." Mm-hmm. And then you submitted the essay, and then you threw together the, the presentation. Yes. Proposal. During lunch, we discussed what we wanted to do. We w- all have watched the video and we all had different thoughts about it so I thought it was only fair that we did our own uh, a different philosopher on it and so um, we kind of did uh, I want to do Loth of Innocence I want to do narrative I want to do um, facticity and factuality and things like that it was that easy you guys just divided it up that quickly that's great yeah it was like the first 10 minutes of lunch and then we started gossiping <laughs> <laughs> great I, and then that that's all well, from that point on that was the next week though um we did we tried to communicate and try to actually meet up somewhere to talk and to work on it but everybody's schedule was super busy and so that was literally the only time we had to sit down and talk about it and then it was monday like the day before before, 24 (laughs) hours ago (laughs) and so i wasn't freaking out too much about it about it because I had my notes and I knew what I wanted to do. I wasn't going to spend Monday night stressing and pretending like this had a midnight due date to so finish it or anything. Yeah, I wasn't nervous. I was fine. And then it, they said we agreed to meet at 11 a.m. on Tuesday in the library. And um, yeah, so we, we rented a room. We were out there. We all had our laptops. That's awesome. See, this is great. That's what college is all about. Yeah. <laughs> Turning things last minute. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, you know, it doesn't stop at college. Uh, yeah, the uh, no, the whole idea of getting together with your your classmates and you know you got a common goal and the deadline's there, so you're working hard and you're holed up in the library and you're yeah. freaking out and you're stressing out and you're calling out of work and you're getting, you know, 
awful bowel movement. I don't know. Whatever the complaint <laughs> case is, you're feeling it. You're feeling it. Um, no, that's awesome. Yeah, just de stress. Yeah. I had to give out like a lot of gum to them, so they like. I don't know. It, it, what? I gave them gum. Nicorette so, gum? No, no. <laughs> just, just icebreakers gum. To, okay. I don't know. It helped to stress everybody a little. Well, that's good. Yeah. Good gum. I don't know. I, I just plugged in my headphones and I had to work because I know that if I tried to listen to everybody yeah. and like give them input, then I wasn't going to work on mine. So I think they did a run through without me because I was the last one to turn my stuff in and I was the one going first. Yeah, so that's like, crazy. I think we'll just go without you, Emily. Okay, you just sit there and work. And I was just like, that's fine. <laughs> You're like, can you do the whole thing without me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, two of you got it right. It was pretty good. Mm-hmm. The other two, yeah. didn't quite. Gotta, gotta look back at that factuality versus facticity again. I don't know if we quite got that, but nonetheless, pretty. It was pretty. It was a pretty awesome presentation. Um, what uh, what was going on with the dude in the audience? What was he going on about? Because I had to leave for a second to go take care of something, mm-hmm. you know, for the conference. And then came back and y'all were still kind of talking. Was he trying to defend um, Ron Paul or? Jake. Jake Paul. Yes. I'm going to keep doing that on purpose. I believe so. The one in the green shirt? Yeah. I mean, like, and he was very respectful, but uh, I was I was trying to figure out what his point was. And I, I was just like, well, I don't really know. Look, everything you told me about Jake Paul, it was like basically the first I've ever heard of it. Mm-hmm. So he used to set fire to backyards. Is that what you said? Like, or fire think, to babies or something? Or no, he set a pool on fire somehow. He, How's he that threw, possible? He threw, he emptied out the pool and then he threw furniture in it and caught it on fire. Wow. And so it created just, it like terrified his neighbors and the neighbors called the police. And he was like, why are you like, like trashing my party, dude? I don't know <laughs> what he said. That reminds like, me of my bar mitzvah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seemed like what he was saying, what, what the student was trying to say, uh, and uh, forgive me, I never, I don't think I ever caught his name, but um, he was like, you know, you can't blame J- uh, Jake Paul because ev- a lot of people are doing what Jake Paul does, yeah. but Jake Paul just did it bigger than all of them, and so he's sort of the lightning rod to it, but it's not like... I think like what he was trying to say was that if Jake Paul stopped doing what he was doing, or you find out that everything Jake Paul was doing is fake, which is, I guess, sort of what the documentary uncovers, mm-hmm. it, it, there'll, there'll be somebody else to do Jake Paul. Like somebody else is going to do him regardless. So mm-hmm. uh, is that what he's trying to say? I mean, I don't know. Is that what he's trying so. to say? <laughs> and I think we said that, he yes, there are other people that try to do crazy stunts like him to get fame, but... Jake Paul has the most followers, and so we believe he's the most responsible, too, I think. I think that's what one of us said. The most responsible person on YouTube is Jake Paul? No, not really. The phones are lighting up, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. This is why I didn't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I thought it was over. Why am I on the radio talking about this? <laughs> um, well, no, you told me that you would do anything to get out of those Chronicle meetings. Oh, know. I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> Ali, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, what uh, what was your uh, switching it back over here to, to Raphael? What was your um, impression then uh, of of some of the presentations you saw? So, so you saw the one on violence and video games. Mm-hmm. Were you swayed by the presentation, or you just kind of found it food for thought? Like, are you are you now going to uh, no longer? If you, I don't know if you do or not, are you going to eschew? Are you going to avoid uh, violent video games now? Or uh, first, I didn't even play. Violent video games at all. I don't either. <laughs> yeah, so. But um, when she put up the PowerPoint where I saw the the brain from the frontal lobe. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, she yeah. got neurological with it. Yeah, yeah. and then she was she was presenting the way adult think, thinks and the way they, they, they process things as they grow up. Yeah, And yeah. the way kids do or teenagers do. When she was doing the comparison. That was interesting. Yeah, yeah. that was really... Yeah, and so I was th- I was thinking I was like, but yeah, sh- this this is right. What sh- what what is showing? It's right, cause you know, usually kids. Did we get that on camera? That kid almost took a digger right in front of the studio. <laughs> <laughs> he like tripped on his shoelace or something. You can go back and watch it. That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I, keep going. I just caught my. Th- I thought he was gonna go into the window. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah. So, uh, kids usually have quick. Quick memory and fast memory. Yeah. And um, the way they think as compared to adults, it's totally different. Yeah, because an adult will have a, a greater mind 
a, a greater way of thinking and seeing bigger picture of things exactly compared to uh, the way kids would do and so when she was doing that yeah that yeah really no that's great and it's she's getting at this point that is actually sort of uh, similar to what we study in, in the Las Venistas class this idea that kids they can't distinguish facts from values necessarily. Yeah. And so they don't, they're, they're very, another way to put this is that they're very impressionable and, and easily influenced. And so when a kid sees, you know, when a kid feels like he's a hero when he kills a lot of bad guys in a video game, he's going to locate that as a source of, of the, that kind of feeling. And if people, you know, media, his parents, television, the Bible, NCIS, whatever, <laughs> uh, teaches you that you should want to be a hero. Uh, you're going to you're going to go back to the things that make you feel like a hero and where you learned that. And you know, a lot of kids. Look, I was a video game when I was a kid. I played a ton of video games. Like I was on. I had Super, I had NES, I had Sega Genesis, I had Super NES. Um, they weren't <laughs> nearly as violent as, as like, the games are now, but they were violent. My favorite game in the world was called Gunstar Heroes. You were the hero if you were a star using your gun. I mean, that's what it is. <laughs> um, and so I, I see where she's coming from. And I think you're right. I think bringing into it, into the uh, fold there the neurological implications, the, uh, the, the, the investigations into the more material physicality of, of mental states, um, yeah, I think it, did, it served her purpose as well. I think it helped her illustrate her points. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think... Uh, who else y'all were there for? Uh, did, yeah. Did Miller present? I think Miller presented. He did. He presented much later. Oh, he yeah. presented uh, almost towards the end. And oh. yeah, his presentation was interesting. I missed it. Trace Miller's, yeah. is It was, um, I mean, first of all, the fact that kid is as, as young as he is and he's getting this stuff so well is really impressive. Yeah. But um, yeah, his was this idea. He really did a beautiful job of summarizing the whole history philosophy from one particular vantage point. Because uh, his presentation too had nothing to do with his first paper. This was just like something else oh, so that he cool. wrote. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Um, yeah, imagine that, Emily. Some people do this for the love of it. Yeah, wow. I think he wrote a lot. <laughs> he wrote it because I, I saw it and I was like, yeah, this is a lot. And that was so, that was so cool. I yeah. thought there was a kid in there that looked like you too. I think when I walked up there, huh. I, there he had the same hairstyle, but I think he had square glasses. And I was like, Manzi? And then you, you came up, and I was like, Manzi. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, young. Emily, have you met my twin? <laughs> <laughs> this is Zanmi. <laughs> <laughs> Manzi and Zanmi. <laughs> That should be like, I want to create an alter ego where that's what I go by, <laughs> like Waluigi or something. When somebody, when you see students outside of school. Exactly. Nancy, no. This is and me. <laughs> Pass me that scotch. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I don't know. I didn't see anybody that looked like me. I, th I only saw one devilishly handsome man there. <laughs> but, uh, maybe there were two. Who knows? Yeah, the uh, Trace's, um, Trace's paper was... Uh, I'm trying to think of the ultimate, the long and short of it was this. He wanted to talk about um, the hypersexuality of our culture. And he kind of attributed it to, to be the result of um, something that happened in philosophy in the 1600s, interestingly enough. And uh, yeah, replacing God with humanity, essentially. So going from being to thinking equals being. Like it was a really nuanced, I mean, borderline graduate level work. Kid's sixteen. It's pretty. It's pretty damn impressive. Um, yeah, I wish there were more people there for his though. Uh, the audience was sort of thinning out around like two o'clock. He presented at like two two thirty. Um, so, so towards towards the end, but uh, still enough people. Still a lot. Of, plenty of people were there. But um, yeah, just just uh, yeah. The honor students had a really strong showing for sure. Did you see? Um, were you around for? Uh, uh, I can't remember. Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember the order. It, it was all a blur. You have to understand. Uh, for, for the people running that conference, it was um, it was busy. It was just one hundred one thing after the other, making sure everything was running smoothly and and, yeah. and yes. people communicating. As well as for the performers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Seriously, um, but okay. Uh, any any others? Were you able to watch any of them, or did you have to dip right after you presented? Uh, I had to leave. Yeah, I wanted to go see uh, Callie's in a. We wanted to go see Callie's, but we felt like we would be, like, not taken back, but kind of, like, down. Because, like, Callie had, like, this whole 
idea. He had it structured. He like the video game was awesome. His presentation was amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. And like he was so <sighs> passionate about it. Yeah. And we were, I think, on Friday. We were like, okay, yeah, let's meet sometime or so. We'll see if we can get together this weekend. If not, then Monday. And Kelly's like, yeah, I'm just trying to memorize everything. And we were just like, we don't even have a script, <laughs> man. <laughs> no, it was. He was going by memory. It was pretty impressive. Yeah. For some of it. Uh, no, he he was he came up to me before and he was just like. He's like, I'm too nervous. I can't do this. <laughs> He's like, I'm really, I'm really nervous, Professor. I was like, Oh, you're gonna be great. And he was just like, Yeah, okay. <laughs> like he just, and then he went up there and he was composed and he was making jokes and uh, I got a great picture of him on YouTube or not YouTube on um, on on our Twitter mm-hmm. that I posted of like he was like in the he was like preaching like it was crazy. Um, yeah, yeah, it was really good. Uh, yeah, it's uh, but again the whole thing is recorded and they sent me the link today to it so you can watch the entire thing. You could. You could go and watch certain people you wanted to present. Uh, Cameron's presentation from our honors class was also really good. Oh. It was uh, it was right towards the end, but um, yeah, she had an amazing presentation. Uh, yeah, really. I she I think she read her paper, but her paper was really good. That's really good. Yeah. So there was I think you have this other student where uh, this he was talking about Kukigar and oh yeah yeah. And he 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 did mention something like oh Kikiga. yeah that was Cali yeah that was the dude we were yeah. just talking about oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. that was Cali oh yeah. yeah cool he said something he said something that Kikiga does not believe God exists yeah but he has faith yeah yeah you asked him a like question that. about that I remember this now yeah. yeah um yeah he's talking about the the aesthetic life the um the ethical life and then the religious life these three sort of leaps of faith these stages yeah. that, that you advance it's very existential it's he's like a big existentialist we're not looking at in our class but um but yeah he, he did that research on his own cali and, and tried to relate it to the video game because there's a character i think kierkegaard in the video game or something like that yeah I think but he was the boss or something what yeah <laughs> something like that yeah 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 um which is cool uh cool with a k like how you spell kierkegaard um yeah, so essentially it's it's this idea that you have the aesthetic life, and the aesthetic life is you, you live for, for experience, you live for drama, you live for the fun of it. And eventually you have to get beyond that to live for, for a more ethical life. And then the ethical life prepares you to live the religious life. So Kierkegaard was not an atheist. He, did, he does believe in God, but it, it's a belief. It's a, it's a faith-based thing. It's a leap of faith. Um, Kierkegaard's beef was with organized religion. Mm. That's what makes him... It, it's like an... It's a... Christianity as an individual religious endeavor. It's it's pretty it was pretty revolutionary. Um, all right, so tell me about the aftermath um, when it was done. How'd you feel? I think f- for some motivation to get us through, um, I was like, hey guys, once we finish this, we don't have to take the final. Remember? And I was like, everybody's gonna be there stressing on what number they're gonna get for their final, and we can go do a Bob Ross painting party. <laughs> And that really motivated them. We even made plans. Like after we kind of like hung out around after, and they were like, "Okay, so for this for this painting party, I'll bring the acrylics. I'll bring the oils. I have some canvases already, and we'll all meet at my house. And somebody else is gonna bring some." Are you really doing that? Oh, that's so. We'll see if we plan everything less a minute like we did this time. That's so funny. Just give me the address, and I'll I'll be there. I'll I'll be right behind you, (laughs) Manzi. How about we host the finals at your painting party? <laughs> Paint by numbers. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh gosh, we have fun here, don't we? Um, but did you feel accomplished? That's what I'm wondering. It must have felt rather than just sort of relief. Did you feel like you went up there and you you, you crushed it? Like you did something and you made a point and you impressed? As I was watching the others, I kind of did feel proud because we did a run through and it was kind of choppy. My biggest worry was making sure that everything kind of flowed together instead mm-hmm. of like, oh, this is my philosopher because I had to, you know? I, yeah, yeah, so yeah. After watching them perform and like finally like, you know? Yeah. You guys had, it seemed like a narrative. It didn't mm-hmm. seem disjointed. Yeah. It seemed and cohesive. that's what I wanted, like watching them go and finally like build up the courage to speak and suck down all those butterflies yeah. <laughs> like yeah, i was proud of them interesting analogy but yeah, yeah. <laughs> well yeah i mean look the the butterflies um are a good thing because it tells you that you care mm-hmm. you know and you know it's not just that you care about looking foolish or, or not looking foolish i think it seemed like you guys generally cared about making your points and making being understood and being mm-hmm. being heard and I was, I was so proud of you guys like i mean that super proud of you guys um very much so 
I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, guys, uh, we do. So I guess there's a there's a show. It's tentatively tentatively titled Chris. That's uh, starting at two. Um, and we want to be good uh, studio guests here. And and then my show with Ali, my editor, and KB is at four, unedited. Oh, I was like, rock shop? <laughs> yeah, oh, unedited. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so you got to show it. Oh, so you're just kind of, you're podcasting it up today. Yeah. Nice. Ali's just on Wednesdays, though. <laughs> what, are you guys, uh, what are you guys talking about today? I have no idea. We used to be also pl- like plan on things. We didn't want to talk about the election last time, so we just talked about school. Mm. We'll see what we talk about today. <laughs> Funny politics. <laughs> yeah, maybe you can talk about the, the conference. Maybe. That'd be really cool if, uh, if somebody from the Chronicle were to have covered the conference. That would have been nice. Yeah. yeah. I was too busy being in it to cover it. <laughs> maybe you can do both. I don't know. Hold on, guys. Let me take a picture. <laughs> I took some pictures. Interview myself. Can I be a photojournal? <laughs> 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 Interview myself, yeah. <laughs> Hey, now we're getting back to class. Oh my God. <laughs> Becoming the author and r- narrator and actor of your life. Okay. Um, well, any any other any final shout outs or anything like that? I guess we'll we'll wrap up here. Uh, we'll Putting forty five minutes in, not too shabby. Um, any final thoughts or anything? Any know. plugs? Are you gonna have another one next semester? Yeah. Well, okay. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. We're gonna be doing it's a semesterly thing, and Richland will be hosting it every single semester. Um, I'll give you a little inside baseball. I um. On Monday, I had a meeting. Uh, this is why I had to cancel my office hours. Sorry, guys. On Monday, I had a meeting over El Central West to meet with the uh, the chair of the philosophy department of every philosophy department in the district, and um, you know, talking about this, talking about a lot of uh, about a lot of things, really. But but this, I, I made sure to bring up as well. And um, I think we're going to really do a big marketing campaign for this thing in, in for the for the spring. I think I'll be going. I'll be personally going to every single college campus. Um, and marketing for this to make it even bigger. We're trying to make it bigger every year. This is the biggest it's been, mm-hmm. um, and it's in. It was, it was first time it was in Brazos. I, I love the gallery. I love. It was so. Be- I was worried it was going to rain, and then we're not going to get like the the natural lighting and stuff like that. But uh, it worked out really well. So um, yeah, every semester it's going to happen. Okay. Maybe then I'll cover it next semester. <laughs> yeah. Well, what we want to do is eventually start to publish these things, mm-hmm. where we begin to publish some of the the conference proceedings. It's it's something that happens, and um, we're trying to get money to do that. Um, right on, folks. Okay. Uh, Quick question: though. How many of those weren't RCL students? RLC. RLC <laughs> students. Yeah. Um, I don't. Kn- well, here's the thing: a lot of those ones that were selected were RLC students, uh-huh. but we got a lot of we got submissions that that weren't. But we felt like, you know, we went with quality on this one, I suppose. Um, and to be fair, most of the most of the submissions were from RLC, so it wasn't like. We got a bunch of submissions and then like seven from RLC. We just took all the RLC <laughs> ones. It wasn't like that at all. The percentage broke down accordingly. Um, but yeah, what, what we want ideally is to really get full get full uh, uh, participation from all of the schools. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we're going to hope to continue to grow that. And I think, you know, a piece in the Chronicle might help. Uh, I mean, look, it certainly helped the Philosophy Club grow when we had that piece a couple years ago. Um, I thought you were a student. I think you're also on the back of the newspaper. When yeah. We have oh, show. yeah. That's I me. was like, oh, who's that kid? And then I went to your class and I'm like, oh, no, he's not a kid. Oh, no, I'm still a kid. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So. So, again, we have we have a long storied history, the Chronicle and the Philosophy Club. Anywho, uh, you are listening to uh, KDUX Web Radio broadcast live from Richland College in Dallas, Texas. We are the voice of Richland College. Views expressed on this show are our own unless otherwise stated and do not reflect the opinion of K2X or Radio, Richland College, or the DCCCD. Uh, real quick here, though, um, do bear in mind that the Philosophy Club Radio Hour is an extension of the Philosophy Club. And once again, the Philosophy Club proper uh, meets every Tuesday from uh, 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock in EO32. This microphone almost fell off. Uh, um, I am the faculty sponsor, Jeff Manzi. Professor Manzi, come see me in my office, Wichita Hall, room 231. Come by any time if you want to talk about the Philosophy Club, Philosophy, Philosophy Club Radio Hour. Uh, the Philosophy and Film Series is holding its final installment uh, the first week of December. So the first Wednesday of December is when we're having it. Let's say the 5th, maybe? i got to go back and check. But um, look out for that. We're watching a movie called Hail Mary by Jean-Luc Godard. Very controversial. Um, it was banned by the church. It's a uh, rendition. It's a contemporary remaking of the uh, Immaculate Conception. No. Story, or, or rather, not the Immaculate Conception, uh, the conception of Jesus and Mary, because uh, as we all know, the Immaculate Conception 
was actually Mary being conceived without sin in Anne, her mom. Anyways, uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, the Philosophy Club is hosting a fundraiser. We're going to have fun raising funds. <laughs> it's going to be the, the, the morning back from Thanksgiving. We'll be selling uh, kolaches and donuts and coffee and orange juice uh, and um, hot tea. To start your morning off right, I think we're going to be beginning at 7 a.m. and we'll be going until noon. Where? Uh, it's going to be, thank you, it's going to be in Wichita Hall as well as El Paso Hall. So those two stations. So as soon as you walk into Wichita, it's going to be right there. And El Paso Hall, um, right by the student lounge, it's going to be there. So yeah, it should be good. I mean, look, I'm going to be bleary-eyed and you know, returning from the long weekend. So uh, hopefully this will help put a little pep in your step. Philosopher pep. <laughs> Jack, put the warning. <laughs> uh, okay, well, we got to say my catchphrase. Um, without any further ado, uh, I, I wish all the students luck as we move towards, the, I would say, crunch time in the semester. Um, so thanks for tuning in, and don't forget to think about it.